explain it. Sales are equally important as marketing, and I'm telling you that they're not. Which is most important to your business? Is it sales? Is it marketing? And how do these two pieces play together to help your business grow? In this episode, Jim and I deep dive into the importance, the crucialness of sales as the lifeblood of your business, when to add in marketing, when to consider multiple streams of income, and the opportunities that Jim passed up so he could stay clear, so he could stay focused in growing his one thing. Stay tuned and let's help you rethink sales. How you can be the greatest salesperson on the planet. Jim, we get this question so much, and I think you and I have such a rich perspective on this. In today's episode, I want to talk about sales versus marketing, which one's more important, and your experience as a salesperson and my experience as a marketer. I think this is going to be a really enjoyable conversation. Um, and I think to start, they're both crucially important. Sales and marketing are such an important pair to growing your business, to growing your sales. Um, talk about the importance of sales and connect it to marketing. Then I'll do the opposite and talk about how marketing is crucial. Um, so how do you see these two things? sales and marketing. Do you think one is more important? Talk to me about it. Well, so let's not forget the reason yes. that we're here. And as a business owner, we're yes. here to sell stuff. So let's just mm -hmm. think about that and put that off to the side. So we yes. as a business yes. are here to sell stuff. That said, if we don't sell stuff, yes. there yes. is no business. Okay. So Sales is vitally important, vitally important. Is it the most important part of this equation? Yes, it is. It is. Sales is the reason yes. for yes. the marketing. Okay. Now that said, I'm going to go okay. a completely different direction. And, and please understand to the audience here, I have no idea what Derek is going to ask me ever. I have no notes. I'm not, I'm not reading from a, a book or anything like that. I'm just telling you how I feel about the question at a very visceral level based on my experience and based on the knowledge that I've gleaned over the years in terms of reading and studying and observing and expert counsel and whatnot. So sales, without a doubt, is the most important component of the, the, the um, idea of owning and operating a business. That's it for Pitt. So that said, before we market, yes. we have to have a process. And the process has to be scalable. So if we have a bad process and we go to marketing, mm -hmm. we're just going to be bringing in people so to good, go Jim. through yeah. a bad process. And so that's going to be a complete inefficient use of money. Remember, you know, another very important part of running a business is working capital, cash, cash in the bank. Okay. So, the one thing about the marketers is that they're running a business as well. And what are they doing? They're selling. And what do they want when they sell? They want their money. They want the money. They want to be paid. And so this is cash gone, okay? And so if we, if we don't have the right process in place, then the marketing dollars are not going to be as efficient. In other words, we're going to be wasting money, precious money, precious capital. So for those of you who are starting a new business, the last thing yes, you want to do yes is market. Forget about marketing. It's not the thing to do. And I'll tell you a quick little story about that. I uh, got into, uh, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, Derek, I got into floating, uh, which is a, a, a relaxation technique and an anti-anxiety technique. Um, it's very similar to, it, it is meditating actually, and you actually float in a, uh, a tank and it's sensory deprivation to a very large degree. You're floating in about 12 inches of water and it's loaded with magnesium. So we actually do float. It's like a, there's like, there's no gravity in this thing. So that's a whole nother subject. But so I decided that I wanted to float. I wanted to try this. I read two books about it. I wanted to try this. So my, my daughter, I think it was my daughter said, there's a place in North Sales, brand new place. I said, Oh, great. I said, I will, um, me call them. And then I had another recommendation, which was a place called Levity in Score Hill. So anyways, I called the first yeah. place because that's yeah. a little closer, quite frankly. It's North Purcells versus uh, Score Hill. So I call them, and, 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 it, and it's a voicemail. 
Okay. And so they're, they're marketing. I got them from the website, from their website, excuse me. So that's a, a form of marketing. So they have this thing up and it right. says, we'll Great. call this number. They call the number and they have a voicemail and I, they, they, so they go through this whole process of the voicemail and they said, Oh, by the way, we don't check our voicemail. Right. So don't leave a message. I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me, but okay. So then it says, go to our website and just, you know, schedule an appointment. So I follow instructions. I want to float, right? Even though my first impression is these people are bozos. Okay. So I go to the website, couldn't schedule an appointment. Couldn't do it. it, it their website didn't work. So not only did they have a bad process with respect to this stupid voicemail, like how much effort does, and the reason, by the way, the reason we don't check our voicemails is because we're busy setting up our business. Really? Yes. Yes. You have a customer yes. wanting to float, wanted to, wanted to buy something from you, got my credit card in my hand and you don't check your, you don't check your voicemail because you're setting up your business for what? See, somebody's got the wrong idea here. And so I don't want to give the audience the wrong idea, right? These people clearly aren't prepared to be open for, open for business. So I go to the website, try to schedule an appointment, not happening, couldn't get it to work, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, I'm out, I'm done. So the next suggestion was levity in Squirrel Hill. So I go through the same process. And, and they make it very clear, you can't call them. Okay, you have to do this online. So I do it online, schedule appointment. Man, I'm getting emails, everything. It's like slick as can be. I go there. I'm greeted by the owner of the business, uh, David. And it was it was just unbelievable from the, yes. from the initial website experience to going there and meeting David to floating to the tea that he had ready for me after the fact. It was just incredible. I ended up floating four more times there, okay? So think about sales. And you're telling me that sales, you're kind of implying that sales are equally important as marketing, and I'm telling you that they're not, right? So anyway, so this fella, David, is through Levity and Score Hill, which, by the way, I recommend if you want to float. It's a really neat experience. Uh, and it's, um, I think it's like $60 to float for an hour or something like that. Don't hold me to that, but it's a very reasonable way to check it out. So anyways, great experience. Tea afterwards. Love this guy. I mean, he's a hugger. I'm a hugger. Like we're just, we're just buddies. And so I did that uh, four times and I ended up buying my own float tank right. or I would still be going to Squirrel Hill. I'm actually going to float today. I already have it in my mind. I'm going to float today. Because it's, uh, it's really a neat experience at home as well. So do you see my point? So the, the, bi the first business had a bad phone, mm -hmm. uh, a voicemail right. process. It doesn't even make sense. They had a bad website. It wasn't even working. So obviously, all, all you got to do is say to somebody outside of the business, hey, do me a favor, schedule an appointment to come float. Oh, geez, you know what, Derek, this isn't working. I, it keeps kicking me out, blah, 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 you know, so right. let's fix that first. Okay. So they didn't have a scalable situation. So they have one person scheduled appointment. It's a buddy. It's a friend. They schedule. All right. It's working. Now they have 10 people do it. All right. It's working. And, and they keep going through it and tell me what I'm doing wrong. And they, they, they get this thing to where it is not necessarily perfect, but it's, it's 90%. It's got to be 90%, right? And so now they have a working website. They don't even have this voicemail. Right. They shouldn't have had a voicemail. It should have been something like, we're not open for business yet. Um, please leave your name and number. We will call you when we are ready. We're just setting things up right now. And believe me, we're very good about returning yes. our phone calls. So you'll get a right. phone call within 24 hours. Not, we don't even check right. our voicemail. Like, then why do you have it, right? So just think about it from that perspective. So now I'm going to double back on what you asked me about. Again, sales are the, it's the most important right. thing. Sales. If we don't sell exactly. stuff, we're not going to be in business. Please business owners, young, old, new veterans. If you don't sell stuff, you're out of business. That is the number one top priority. So that said, we have yes. to have a sales process yes. that is scalable. And so that sales process, which process, which you've heard me talk about before is how, is the customer experience going to go down? How is it going to happen when the customer arrives at, in our case, the dealership? You know, we have a very defined sales process. We want the client to be greeted in a certain manner. We want to ask certain questions early on. We want to do everything we can 
to, to, to have a system in place that is going to be to the customer's advantage as well as to our advantage as a business. And then we put it in place and we keep working it and working it and working it. Sometimes there are modifications. And of course we make those because it's, we're scaling, right? So we finally have this process in place and it's scalable but we're still not going to market. Mm -hmm. We're just going to let the organic traffic show up. And there's a reason, by the way, I'll give you this one as well. But so we're going to let the organic natural traffic show up and we're going to follow our process, make sure it's good, follow our process, make sure it's good, follow our process, tweak, 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 follow our process, make sure it's good, tweak, tweak, tweak. And so we see that uh, initially we have this process and we mm -hmm. talk to a hundred people. And in the case of us, we're selling cars, we sell 10 cars. Hmm, not so good. Let's let's discuss it. Let's seek expert counsel. We modify the process. We do. We go through the next hundred people. We're selling fifteen cars. Hmm, still not so good, really. It's not. So we seek expert counsel. We we modify further. We make tweaks. We get it to 20, 20 sales out of a hundred. And the ideal sweet spot for my way of thinking, way back when when I was running the dealership, would have been three out of ten is the bare minimum. Hopefully four out of ten. So now we have this process in place. We've tested it organically. And, uh, and we know that every time a customer comes in, a client comes in, there's a 40% chance that we are going to yes. sell yes. something. Do you hear me? So now we're going to sell a car. That's the reason we're here. We're doing it organically. And the reason, by the way, that you do it organically initially, please do not market. Don't market until you do what I just said. Because how are you going to know what, the marketing impact is if you don't know what the natural flow of traffic is to your website, to mm -hmm. your uh, physical address, whatever the case may be, how are you going to know? So we do not want to market uh, until we get that number figured out, because in this case, let's say it is a dealership, uh, a, a reasonably sized dealership, and we're selling cars, of course, and we know that by doing nothing, we're going to generate a hundred customers a week 400 a month we're going to sell 40 percent of those people cars and that's going to translate into 64 sold cars 